Get ready, get ready for this pipe and hot tea. Get ready, get ready for a tea time and filter with your girl loving tea. Spilling all this hot tea on this podcast street. So get ready, get ready for this pipe and hot tea. From tea time and filter with your girl loving tea. Hey, Tea Time Unfiltered fans. I just want to let you guys know because I think there's some confusion at times. In order for you guys to watch the full video of our podcast, you have to log into the Spotify app or go on to Spotify.com and go to Tea Time Unfiltered. As soon as you're logged in, the full video will play uninterrupted and you'll be able to see the video video, not just the audio. Um, You're unable to watch the video on any other platform as far as Apple or Google or Anchor. You have to be logged into Spotify to see the full video. So I just wanted to let people know who are asking where do they go see the full video as opposed to listening to the full audio. I will post the links to the Spotify video down below. Thank you guys so much for the support and enjoy the show. Hey, Tea Sippers. Welcome to another episode of Tea Time Unfiltered with your girl, Lovely Tea. And I got my girl, Emily, in the house with me today. Say what's up, everybody. (laughs) So it is a lot going on out here in these internet streets. It's a bunch of drama. We're going to get into a lot of different topics tonight. So one of the things that's trending right now all over Twitter is the drama that's going on on Love & Hip Hop Atlanta with Erica Mena and Safari. And Erica Mena basically had a mental breakdown at the reunion, and a lot of people are dragging Safari. Um, You know, they're saying he's a horrible husband, horrible father. So before we get started, I'm going to go ahead and play the clip, and then we'll go ahead and, you know, discuss it. It's obvious me and Safari will never be. I was in the hospital bed with this man's son. That man didn't care if I made it through that pregnancy. That man didn't care if I made it through that labor. I really have fought through some dark time. Like, literally, I couldn't get out of bed, guys. There was days I could not eat. But at the same time, I have to face my kids and I got to act like everything's okay because I'm the only one that feeds them on a day-to-day basis. Like, I had to drag myself out of that dark place. With my first son, Because I had to hustle so much, I sacrificed so much time away from my firstborn and I'm still trying to make it up to this day. And this is stuff that I've confessed, you know, Mm -hmm. and been vulnerable with to him about. That's why it's weird that he knows traumatic experience I've had of being a single mother once and then he turns around and makes me a single mother twice. I've already come to terms that Safari will never really take accountability. And that's fine. He don't owe me nothing. All he owes now is his kids. And that's, that's all I care about. Safari... Do you want to say anything at this point? Come on. Come on, say this shit. Grow up. Shut the shit up. You can Far. cast me out. I'm cool Far. with it. Speak, bro, because there's somebody out there like you. So you got to speak, bro. I want you to be able to speak and not us speak for you. So if there's anything, I mean, this is the time. I don't even know how to start. We want to hear. Start. He said he has pain. Sometimes to get your pain out, you got to release it. You got pain, dog. You got to get it out, too. Y'all both. Who who wants to get married, have kids, and then end up here? Like, I wouldn't have thought two years later this is where we would have been. We were were just at a place where it was just who could hurt who the most, and we were there for a long time. All right. So let me go ahead and come back on the screen. So you just watched that um, clip. Yeah. And... You know, there's a lot of things that's annoying with this situation. One, I don't know what the point of Shekinah is being on this show. She has no storyline besides being in everybody else's business. I guess she starts that, commentary. That's the only thing I can think of is a little kiki from the side. Right. But it's funny how he had all that smoke for Shekinah and wanted to tell her to shut the F up. You know, I don't like how they constantly infanticize him. This is a 41-year-old grown man. And he's constantly being treated like a child. Oh, Safari, just speak. <laughs> say something. Open your mouth and talk. You're a grown adult. You knew what you were getting into when you guys got with each other. But it's so funny how he just sits there on stage, you know, stoic, like he's a child being punished and sent to the corner. I was thinking the same thing. And did you peep the way that, like, when Kirk started talking, the way Rashida cut her eyes at him? Like, if you don't shut the fuck up. <laughs> 
<laughs> she got them eyes quick. Right. They've been through their little issues too, but at least they were able to get things resolved and moved on. Right. But, exactly. Like adults. You know, it's sad that there is not one, but two kids involved in this mess. But my thing is, this should be like a warning sign to everybody looking at this, because this relationship was created on reality television. Mm -hmm. They were initially on some scary VH1 show. That's how they kind of met each other. And they started falling for each other on that show. And it was like, after that, then they moved in together. They were planning the wedding. She got pregnant. I feel like so much happened in a year with the two of them. It was insane. I don't think they ever really took a chance to get to know each other. Yeah, probably not. And um, I I don't, obviously, I don't, nobody really, or too many people don't know them personally, but just by the image that they portray on, you know, the shows that they're on social media and stuff like that, they both very much give like clout chasers, especially Safari, Erica as well. So in a way I'm like, oh, okay, they're perfect for each other because they seem like attention is a really big thing to them and like you had mentioned before these are both adults i mean it i i will say when erica was talking about you know depression having you know two kids him leaving i, I could imagine that that was probably a, a, a very difficult thing to go through so i appreciate the transparent transparency i'm sure there's a lot of people that can relate but at the same time they were already going through issues with their first kid so why would you have another kid and expect anything different? And again, that's like the perfect definition of insanity. During the same, yes. doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. Matter of fact, I remember doing a video over a year ago where I spoke on this situation because Safari was telling her flat out, I don't want any more kids by you. So I'm going to go ahead and play that clip because a lot of people have forgotten about this when they were all on this VH1 um, after show. This was during COVID. And so VH1 was following up with everybody. And you could tell they weren't clicking back then. Somebody want to have some more babies and somebody don't. She said, how can I look at this baby and not want another one? But tell them why you don't want another one. Because I got too big for, during my pregnancy. No, I didn't Tell say that. Tell Yeah, see, Bad first of all, I never you. said that. That's not right, Safari. Thank she, you. Oh, my. Yo, she's making this up. Yo, you woman almost dies giving birth. You mentioned my stomach afterwards. Oh, wow. I didn't say she got too big. I yes, just said. Yes, you did. You said you got too big, I got too big. I don't want to be fat again. That's what you said. So, so far, no, I didn't say that. I just said you the should whole apologize, especially on camera, man. And it's stressful. Why are you telling him to say I'm sorry? You've never said sorry for anything in your life. <laughs> you never said, said you're sorry. sorry. Oh Lord Jesus! Uh, oh, you were in Vegas yeah, with strippers Ray, when I was Ray, pregnant. Say I still I'm ain't sorry. got an apology. Why for that. is Ray, that? Why sorry. is that? Men have a problem with saying sorry. Say it with me. I'm. Sorry. And then not only that, he waits till after we get married to say he don't want no more kids. Like, you knew I want more kids. Oh, wow. All you need is sperm to get pregnant. What? Princess is requesting and more Erica of my requesting sperm. More of Safari's sperm. You could put it in here. All right. So y'all just saw that clip. So that right there says a lot. One, he's telling her that, you know, he wasn't attracted to her while she was pregnant. She got too big, which is extremely insulting. I would be so mad. How yeah. fucking dare you? Oh, my God. I would have lost it right then and there. I, don't, I would have had PTSD. Like, I would have been so mad. I would have cussed him out. Yeah, because a woman does go through a lot when you're carrying a child. And that's like the closest thing that you come to death is when you're going through labor. So the fact that he's more worried about her physical appearance and her stomach and everything else, that alone should have been a red flag. And I felt like he wasn't joking in that moment. And the fact that you have to sneak and take your husband's sperm to get pregnant probably should be a warning sign that you shouldn't bring any more kids into the, into the world with this man, husband or not. So I think Erica, she had the warnings. They were right there in front of her face. I remember everybody was telling her at that point, you need to leave him. Don't get pregnant. This is not good. Why is he, you know, talking about, you know, his own child's mother, wife like that. And what does she do? She still turns around and gets pregnant by him. And now she's on the show acting so bewildered and shocked and saddened. 
he yeah. already showed you his true colors. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I, I find it interesting that, you know, the the music that they're playing in the background and they're trying to make it like a lighthearted and fun thing. But that's not that's very dysfunctional. That's very toxic. And I remember um, watching an interview Safari did one time where he was talking about um, his self-esteem, how his self-esteem got so low. And he was like in the gym all the time, just like super focused, I guess, like on his physical appearance. So mm -hmm. I don't know if maybe him having low self-esteem maybe tied into all that to where he wants to physically look a certain way and he wants her to physically look a certain way. But just to piggyback off of what you said, exactly. If someone ain't got to tell me one time that I'm too big, that you ain't, I'm not going to give you a second chance ever again. Exactly. And I think that's when she really should have took heed because the fact that now you guys have two kids together the relationship slash marriage is completely dysfunctional. He's running around here like he's a teenager and not a father of two. And then she's stressing herself out because she also has another son. So she's technically taking care of three children while he's quote unquote living his best life. And it's really sad. And that's why I say that, you know, instead of looking up at these people and being envious of their lives, because again, you're just mainly seeing a highlight reel on Instagram really understand that nobody's relationship is perfect and stop looking to people like Safari and Erica Mena to be relationship goals because they're not. Yeah, a lot of this is just done for a storyline anyways. You know, the love and hip hop is probably their uh, main source of income. I don't, I mean, I'm assuming that's what I'm familiar with them from. So mm -hmm. the fact that, and I'm not bringing children into the world to keep yourself relevant, to keep a storyline going, things like that is not a good reason to have a kid. And it definitely backfired on both of them. Uh, hopefully they can come to some type of common ground and co-parent together. But Safari seems like a big ass baby to me as a man, um, a grown man. Uh, and Erica, you know, like I said, I, I wish them all well. And I hope that, you know, their kids and they, it's just sad because this is all televised too. So their kids could see this one day. Yeah. And that's the sad part is the way that he treated her while she was pregnant with the little boy. And even on this season, he's acting like the little boy's not even his. You know, it's like there's no connection to the second child. So, yeah, it's really unfortunate because these kids are going to get older and they're going to see this. And you have a lot of people who are literally having kids for a storyline, for a check. We see that even on YouTube with some of these vlogging families where they're literally just having a baby or getting pregnant just to, you know, stretch out another year of vlogging. But there's all this turmoil in the background and no children should be created and brought into those type of situations. Yeah. Content. It's just content, content, content. They need to produce the most content, I guess, you know, make money, whatever. But like you said, it's the kids that end up paying the most for it. And, uh, you know, I do feel bad for Erica, but also at the same time, there was red flags to begin with. And at what point as adults do we got to start giving, you know, personal responsibility, reflecting back on our own shitty choices. That way we don't make them again. Exactly. So now I want to go ahead and segue. There's a lot of talk that's going on currently with this whole Balenciaga situation. So if you guys do not know, Balenciaga, who had fired Kanye West back on October 24th, they are in hot water right now because their new ad campaign came out and they literally have a bunch of toddlers, really young kids in this ad campaign, and they're running around with BDSM teddy bears. Um, the floor is filled with all types of just weird symbolism, uh, yellow tape everywhere. And then there's like this book and there's pages from like a court case that has to do with child pornography. And you know, the internet sleuths, honey, they don't miss anything. They were able mm -hmm. to put all these pieces together and it's causing a lot of drama on the internet. And one thing that's really interesting is that Kim Kardashian caught herself trying to basically throw shots at Kanye today. Um, I don't know if you've seen this picture, but I'll show you. Yo, what's up? Baby, let's go. Hey, tea sippers to listen to the rest of this podcast, please go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, Tuned In, or AnchorFM.com, which is a free podcasting site. Thank you guys so much for the support, and stay tuned for the next video.